Hello and welcome, I've been trying to cast an iron armature for an alternator using thermite for quite some time. After several attempts I have decided to stop doing this, it is a very hazardous way to attempt to cast iron. I would advise against it, it is not a good idea. But if you did attempt it, then remember there is a significant risk of eye damage from the flash of the reaction. Never look at the flame with the naked eye. Use welding goggles. Metallic dust inhalation causes permanent lung damage, use a good dust mask. The radiated heat from a 1 kg exothermic thermite reaction can be felt at 50 feet on bare skin. And there is always a risk of trapped pressure leading to an energetic disassembly, spewing out molten metal. Keep it a safe distance. I would advise against it. Alternatively, learn how to use computer-aided design, create a step file and have it CNC'd. On my first attempt, I decided to abort when the plastic bag holding the thermite started to inflate, the air inside was getting warmer. I had made it too early and I decided not to risk it, even though it shouldn't spontaneously combust but there was definitely some reaction between the aluminium and the iron oxide, so I set it off early. For my second attempt, I tried to have the reaction to melt extra scrap iron on the way down to the mold, with the thermite reaction held in a clay pot, and the clay pot held inside a tin can with scrap steel at the bottom. For the second attempt, I made 1 kilogram of thermite again. To mix the iron oxide powder with the aluminium powder, I used a plastic bag to stop dust getting into the air. To initiate the reaction, I used a sparkler that gives plenty of time to clear the area. There was a lot of iron splattering on the bricks, the reaction was very violent and probably most of the iron ends up being blown out of the reaction pot and into the air. Very little goes downwards towards the mold. The amount of energy stored in the aluminium is enormous and it is a relatively small percentage of the total mix. Aluminium is far more reactive than iron and takes the oxygen from the iron oxide, turning it into iron and releasing a lot of heat in the process, a classic zothermic reaction. Miraculously the clay pot didn't shatter and that lulled me into a false sense of security and set me up for failure in the future. On opening the mold, it was clear that almost none of the scrap metal had been melted. The molten metal flowed through the gaps so fast it didn't have time to melt anything. Molten iron reached the top of the mold but didn't drop down into it, not enough volume of molten iron produced. It was at this point that I decided to try to determine what would be the yield from adding different percentages of iron granules. I had seen a YouTube video of someone making a sword and he added 10% of steel or iron granules, but I was not sure if that was the percent that gave the maximum yield. Also having an approximate yield would make it easier to estimate the total weight of thermite required. I decided to make some small scale tests. I was very optimistic on how much I could add. I prepared small tests of 10 grams each, 0 to 70% iron granules in 10% intervals. I mixed up 52 grams of thermite first and then added the iron to each test. In total 28 grams of iron. The 8 small pots are collectively test 3, the search for the optimum yield. Small clay pots with tin foil covering the hole in the base were used to drop molten iron into a tin of sand, so that the iron could be recovered and weighed. First pot 0%, 10 grams thermite. Second pot 10%, 9 grams thermite, 1 gram iron granules. Third pot 20%, 8 grams thermite. 2 grams iron granules.
the 0%, 10%, 20% were easy to ignite, but 30% could hardly sustain the reaction. After that it was not possible to ignite any higher percentages. Fourth pot 30%, 7 grams thermite, 3 grams iron granules. In the end the molten iron never broke through the tin foil at the bottom of the pot. The amount of iron from 0% was 3 grams it looked big but was mostly slag. From the 10% test the amount of iron recovered was 7 grams. The iron recovered from the 10% mix test was very solid and was stuck in the hole at the bottom of the clay pot. I deliberately strike at it with the pliers to see if it will break, which it didn't. From the 20% test the amount of iron recovered was 3 grams, but it was full of holes, not a solid lump of iron and had the appearance of being sintered. The 30% test was the same but worse, very granular and fell apart under the slightest pressure, I didn't bother picking up the pieces and weighing it. The result from 10% granules was better than expected, with 70% initial weight in iron at the end, there is little point in trying to get higher result than that. On test 4, I forgot to put the cover on the top, an old frying pan with a hole drilled in the center and handle removed, that keeps the splatter of molten metal directed at the floor, not that it affected the end result and makes a good firework display. Also since the pot was big, I didn't have a tin can big enough to put it inside. The pot shattered and molten iron poured out of it uncontrollably and nothing went into the mold. For test 5, I reduced the size of the pattern for the mold by 3D printing a smaller PLA plastic version of the armature that I wanted to make. I also put a clay pot inside a metal bucket with plaster of Paris and sand mixture. The plan was to make it reusable and turn it into a mini blast furnace later. Unfortunately I should have made a funnel in the bottom of the clay pot as most of the molten iron collected on the flat bottom and never entered the mold. I did make the modifications but never made test 6. It was at this point that I saw an advertisement from Zometry and I realized that I could just get this part machined for me. Although the thermite casting was unsuccessful, I did prove that the maximum yield can be achieved by adding approximately 10% iron granules. I think if I did one more test, I would be able to make it work. 
but I also thought that, after test 1. In summary, to make this work the thermite needs to have 10% iron granules added, in a clay pot with a secondary steel bucket retainer and a conical shaped exit at the bottom of the clay pot covered with a piece of tin foil to retain the mix and act as a burst disc, and a lid on top to deflect the blast downwards. It is unlikely that this is going to be useful going forwards, unless it is the zombie apocalypse and I need to make an axe in a hurry. Thanks for watching, and if you made it this far, you should smash the like button and subscribe to the channel.